The Story of Siku From Sicilianesh Marchen Once upon a time there lived a man who had three sons. The eldest was called Pepe, the second Alfin, and the youngest Siku. They were all very poor, and at last things got so bad that they really had not enough to eat. So the father called his sons, and said to them, My dear boys, I am too old to work any more, and there is nothing left for me but to beg in the streets. No, no, exclaimed his sons. That you shall never do. Rather, if it must be, would we do it ourselves. But we have thought of a better plan than that. What is it? asked the father. Well, we will take you in the forest, where you shall cut wood, and then we will bind it up in bundles and sell it in the town. So their father let them do as they said, and they all made their way into the forest. And as the old man was weak from lack of food, his sons took it in turns to carry him on their backs. Then they built a little hut where they might take shelter, and set to work. Every morning early the father cut his sticks, and the sons bound them in bundles, and carried them to the town, bringing back the food the old man so much needed. Some months passed in this way, and then the father suddenly fell ill, and knew that the time had come when he must die. He bade his sons fetch a lawyer, so that he might make his will, and when the man arrived he explained his wishes. "'I have,' said he, "'a little house in the village, and over it grows a fig-tree. The house I leave to my sons, who are to live in it together. The fig-tree I divide as follows. To my son Pepe I leave the branches. To my son Alfin I leave the trunk. To my son Siku I leave the fruit. Beside the house and the tree I have an old coverlet, which I leave to my eldest son, and an old purse which I leave to my second son, and a horn, which I leave to my youngest son. And now farewell. Thus speaking, he laid himself down and died quietly. The brothers wept bitterly for their father, whom they loved, and when they had buried him they began to talk over their future lives. "'What shall we do now?' said they. "'Shall we live in the wood or go back to the village?' and they made up their minds to say where they were and continue to earn their living by selling firewood. One very hot evening, after they had been working hard all day, they fell asleep under a tree in front of the hut, and as they slept there came by three fairies, who stopped to look at them. "'What fine fellows!' said one. "'Let us give them a present.' "'Yes, what shall it be?' asked another. This youth has a coverlet over him, said the first fairy. When he wraps it round him, and wishes himself in any place, he will find himself there in an instant. Then said the second fairy, This youth has a purse in his hand. I will promise that it shall always give him as much gold as he asks for. Last came the turn of the third fairy. This one has a horn slung round him. When he blows at the small end, the sea shall be covered with ships and if he blows at the wide end, they shall all be sunk in the waves. So they vanished, without knowing that Siku had been awake and heard all they said. The next day, when they were all cutting wood, he said to his brothers, That old coverlet and the purse are no use to you. I wish you would give them to me. I have a fancy for them, for the sake of old times. Now Pepe and Alfin were very fond of Siku, and never refused him anything. So they let him have the coverlet and the purse without a word. When he had got them safely, Siku went on, Dear brothers, I am tired of the forest. I want to live in the town and work at some trade. Oh, Siku, stay with us, they cried. We are very happy here, and who knows how we shall get on elsewhere. We can always try, answered Siku, and if times are bad, we can come back here and take up woodcutting. So saying, he picked up his bundle of sticks, and his brothers did the same. But when they reached the town they found that the market was overstocked with firewood, and they did not sell enough to buy themselves a dinner, far less to get any food to carry home. 
They were wondering sadly what they should do when Siku said, Come with me to the inn and let us have something to eat. They were so hungry by this time they did not care much whether they paid for it or not, so they followed Siku, who gave his orders to the host. Bring us three dishes, the nicest that you have, and a good bottle of wine. Siku, Siku, whispered his brothers, horrified at this extravagance. Are you mad? How do you ever mean to pay for it? Let me alone, replied Siku. I know what I am about. And when they had finished their dinner, Siku told the others to go on and he would wait to pay the bill. The brothers hurried on without needing to be told twice. For, thought they, he has no money. And of course there will be a row. When they were out of sight, Siko asked the landlord how much he owed, and then said to his purse, Dear purse, give me, I pray you, six florins. And instantly six florins were in the purse. Then he paid the bill and joined his brothers. How did you manage? they asked. Never you mind, answered he. I have paid every penny. And no more would he say. But the other two were very uneasy, for they felt sure something must be wrong, and the sooner they parted company with Siku the better. Siku understood what they were thinking, and, drawing forty gold pieces from his pocket, he held out twenty to each, saying, Take these and turn them to good account. I am going away to seek my own fortune. Then he embraced them, and struck down another road. He wandered on for many days, till at length he came to the town where the king had his court. The first thing Siko did was to order himself some fine clothes, and then buy a grand house just opposite the palace. Next he locked his door, and ordered a shower of gold to cover the staircase, and when this was done the door was flung wide open, and everyone came and peeped at the shining gold stairs. Lastly, the rumor of these wonders reached the ears of the king, who left his palace to behold these splendors with his own eyes, and Siku received him with all respect, and showed him over the house. When the king went home, he told such stories of what he had seen that his wife and daughter declared that they must go and see them too. So the king sent to ask Siku's leave, and Siku answered that if the queen and the princess would be pleased to do him such great honor, he would show them anything they wished. Now the princess was as beautiful as the sun, and when Siku looked upon her his heart went out to her, and he longed to have her to wife. The princess saw what was passing in his mind, and how she could make use of it to satisfy her curiosity as to the golden stairs. So she praised him and flattered him, and put cunning questions, till at length Siku's head was quite turned and he told her the whole story of the fairies and their gifts. Then she begged him to lend her the purse for a few days, so that she could have one made like it, and so great was the love he had for her that he gave it to her at once. The princess returned to the palace, taking with her the purse, which she had not the smallest intention of ever restoring to Siku. Very soon Siku had spent all the money he had by him, and could get no more without the help of his purse. Of course he went at once to the king's daughter, and asked her if she had done with it. But she put him off with some excuse, and told him to come back next day. The next day it was the same thing, and the next, till a great rage filled Siku's heart, instead of the love that had been there. And when night came, he took in his hand a thick stick, wrapped himself in the coverlet, and wished himself in the chamber of the princess. The princess was asleep but Siku seized her arm and pulled her out of bed, and beat her till she gave back the purse. Then he took up the coverlet and wished he was safe in his own house. No sooner had he gone than the princess hastened to her father and complained of her sufferings. Then the king rose up in a fury and commanded Siku to be brought before him. "'You richly deserve death,' said he. But I will allow you to live, if you will instantly hand over to me the coverlet, the purse, and the horn. What could Siku do? Life was sweet, and he was in the power of the king. So he gave up silently his ill-gotten goods, and was as poor as when he was a boy. While he was wondering how he was to live, it suddenly came into his mind that this was the season for the figs to ripen, 
and he said to himself, I will go and see if the tree has borne well. So he set off home, where his brothers still lived, and found them living very uncomfortably, for they had spent all their money, and did not know how to make any more. However, he was pleased to see that the fig tree looked in splendid condition, and was full of fruit. He ran and fetched a basket, and was just feeling the figs to make sure which of them were ripe, when his brother Pepe called to him, Stop! The figs, of course, are yours, but the branches they grow on are mine, and I forbid you to touch them. Siku did not answer, but set a ladder against the tree, so that he could reach the topmost branches, and had his foot already on the first rung when he heard the voice of his brother Alfin. Stop! The trunk belongs to me, and I forbid you to touch it. Then they began to quarrel violently, and there seemed no chance that they would ever cease, till one of them said, Let us go before a judge. The others agreed, and when they had found a man whom they could trust, Siku told him the whole story. This is my verdict, said the judge. The figs in truth belong to you but you cannot pluck them without touching both the trunk and the branches. Therefore you must give your first basketful to your brother Pepe, as the price of his leave to put your ladder against the tree, and the second basketful to your brother Alfin, for leave to shake his boughs. The rest you can keep for yourself. And the brothers were contented and returned home, saying one to the other, We will each of us send a basket of figs to the king. Perhaps he will give us something in return, and if he does, we will divide it faithfully between us. So the best figs were carefully packed in a basket, and Pepe set out with it to the castle. On the road he met a little old man who stopped and said to him, "'What have you got there, my fine fellow?' "'What is that to you?' was the answer. "'Mind your own business.' But the old man only repeated his question, and Pepe, to get rid of him, exclaimed in anger, "'Dirt!' "'Good!' replied the old man. "'Dirt you have said, and dirt let it be.' Pepe only tossed his head and went on his way till he got to the castle, where he knocked at the door. "'I have a basket of lovely figs for the king,' he said to the servant who opened it, "'if his majesty will be graciously pleased to accept them with my humble duty.' The king loved figs, and ordered Pepe to be admitted to his presence, and a silver dish to be brought on which to put the figs. When Pepe uncovered his basket, sure enough, a layer of beautiful purple figs met the king's eyes. But underneath there was nothing but dirt. "'How dare you play me such a trick!' shrieked the king in a rage. "'Take him away, and give him fifty lashes!' This was done, and Pepe returned home, sore and angry but determined to say nothing about his adventure. And when his brothers asked him what had happened, he only answered, We have all three been, I will tell you. 